So in today's class what we will do is we will look at a one sided, we will look at a one sided derivative for the first derivative representation right and then we will look at again we will go back look at the second derivative and if we have time we will go on to applying it to a set of simple problems because by the time we are finished here we will know how to represent functions, we know how to represent derivatives so we might as well try out a few simple problems to see if we are able to solve differential equations that are of interest to us okay fine is that okay right. So if we want uh, second order meaning truncation error is second order first derivative this is what we want right. The last class as I said I have already done uh, a higher order let us look at for a look for a second order. So if I have the points i, i plus 1, i plus 2 these are located at xi, xi plus 1, xi plus 2 the function values there are fi fi plus 1, fi plus 2 and right now first what we will do is we will assume that h is like h in fact equals xi plus 1 minus xi which equals xi minus xi minus 1. We will assume that they are equal intervals right now okay and later we will do unequal intervals because unequal intervals are of interest to us though except here you will see it here in this class and then you will never see me use unequal intervals again. So this class is important in that sense unequal intervals are important but for this course I am not going to do unequal intervals outside this class okay is that fine okay. So it is a simple game now so now we are going to do it right clean from the start simple game now we want to find the derivative at i and I am going to use the points i plus 1 and i plus 2 we will use Taylor series. So f at i plus 1 is f at i plus h times f prime at i the prime indicates differentiation with respect to x plus h squared by 2 factorial f double prime at i plus h cube by 3 factorial f triple prime at i plus h to the fourth by 4 factorial f fourth derivative at i and then so on okay. In a similar fashion f i plus 2 is f i minus h times f prime at i I am sorry plus 2 h times f prime at i you can see in my mind I did a 9 minus 1 it is okay. You have to be very careful okay fine plus 4 h squared by 2 factorial f double prime at i plus 8 h cubed by 3 factorial f triple prime at i. The reason why I do not succumb to the temptation to expand this out and cancel and so on is because I know I am going to combine these two terms right so I leave whatever is common between them I leave them as they are okay. There is a temptation when you are writing this to cancel terms and so on do not do it plus 16 h to the fourth by 4 factorial the fourth derivative and so on. So we look at these two our objective is to extract out the f prime at i so what do I need to do if I multiply the first equation by 4. I will get a 4 h squared here and I will get a 4 h squared here so if I multiply the first equation by 4 and subtract the second equation I will knock out the h squared term. So 4 f i plus 1 minus f i plus 2 is 4 f i minus f i which is 3 f i 4 h f prime right minus 2 that is 
plus 2h f prime at i this will cancel that is the whole point of multiplying by 4 and this gives me minus 4h cubed by 3 factorial the third derivative minus 12h cubed by 4 factorial fourth derivative did I make a mistake h power 4 by and so on okay. So it is very clear it is very easy to make mistakes you have to be really careful when you are doing this fine. So let us solve for f prime at i so if we come here and you solve for f prime at i that derivative is 4 f i plus 1 uh, minus 3 f i minus f i plus 2 divided by 2 h and what does that leave me 2 h squared by 3 factorial f double prime plus higher order terms uh, f triple prime plus higher order terms. So if I throw this out I say this is the representation for the derivative I throw this out right so this is a truncation error truncation error is of the order of h squared so it is 1 by 3 h squared f triple prime at i is that fine truncation error is of that order and again like I did last time I make a quick check I add 4 minus 3 plus minus 1 that is 0 why do I say that you ask yourself the question why do I test even last time I tested by adding up all the coefficients to make sure they added up to 0 why do I do that constant function it should work yes constant function it should work it should work for a con constant function should give me a should give me a 0 right for constant function it should give me 0 and of course in the limiting process in the limiting process the numerator is supposed to go to the numerator is supposed to go to f at i if I actually take the limit remember this is a finite difference if I go back to the infinite process which means I take the limit h going to 0 right the numerator is supposed to independently go to 0 and the denominator goes independently to 0 it is the ratio that gives me the derivative you understand right. So from a how should I put it from a operational point of view yes I have a derivative I have a representation for the derivative and the constant function should give me a 0 derivative right that is from an operational point of view. The other process is of course I have an infinite process for which I have replaced by a finite pro I, I, I stop I do not divide by I do not take the limit h going to 0 but if I do go take h going to 0 this should go to the derivative it has to converge to the derivative right we want it to converge to the derivative is that clear okay. So the summation so that is one sanity check that you can always do add add to make sure that they all add up to 0 okay this is fine now what if they were unequal intervals what if they were unequal intervals so we have these weights we have seen this, this is very nice we have the truncation error but what if the intervals were unequal intervals what if the intervals were unequal intervals and just for the fun of it just for the fun of it we can do a, you can we can still do a comparison but just for the fun of it we will do i i minus 1 and i minus 2 okay and in this case this length happens to be h and to keep our algebra simple I will call this some alpha times h is that fine just to keep our algebra simple and this kind of a relationship you may actually get in future applications so I will leave, leave this as alpha times h and we will just quickly repeat this process okay we will just quickly repeat this process. So what do we have f at i minus 1 yes f at i minus h times f prime at i plus h squared by 2 factorial second derivative of it at, at right at i minus h cubed by 3 factorial f triple prime at i plus h to the fourth by 4 factorial 
the fourth derivative at i and so on. f at i minus 2 is f at i minus I am sorry 1 plus alpha 1 plus alpha times h f prime at i plus 1 plus alpha squared 1 plus alpha whole squared 8 squared by 2 factorial f the second derivative i so it is very clear it is not it is not that bad plus so on right 1 plus alpha power 4 4 factorial h to the fourth and that will be multiplying the fourth derivative and you have all the other terms what do I do now so if I multiply the first equation by 1 plus alpha squared if I multiply the first equation by 1 plus alpha squared I should be able to cancel out the second derivative term okay so 1 plus alpha squared f i minus 1 1 plus alpha squared f i minus 1 minus I am going to subtract out this term f i minus 2 equals so you should be happy if alpha over 1 1 plus alpha squared is 2 squared which is 4 which is what we did earlier right so that is not bad f i minus 2 equals we have 1 plus alpha squared oh I keep doing that minus 1 f i what happens to this term so you get a 1 plus alpha squared minus 1 plus alpha h f prime and what else minus alpha no by 2 no by 2 that is the first derivative term then what is the third term by 3 factor the third term goes away so and then you get minus 1 plus alpha squared minus 1 plus alpha cubed h cube by 3 factorial f triple prime and I would not bother with the fourth term right the fourth term something that you can work out because normally when I do it when I am sitting alone I sort of simplify this a little faster than this right so but it is fine we, we will we will let us see what we get here so we have 1 plus alpha squared f i minus 1 minus f i minus 2 equals alpha into 2 plus alpha is that fine and if alpha equals 1 that gives you 3 so we are happy it is working out so that is f i okay and what is the next term I can factor out the I can factor out 1 plus alpha so that gives me a minus 1 plus alpha into alpha h f prime at i in the alpha equals 1 that is 2 okay that also works plus 
plus or minus minus 1 plus alpha squared into 1 minus 1 minus alpha h cubed by 3 factorial f triple prime i and so on okay actually I made a mistake here there is a 3 factorial at that point it is okay. Is that okay? So what does it give me for f prime at i? One plus alpha squared minus alpha two plus alpha fi fi minus one fi minus fi minus two. divided by alpha into 1 plus alpha do you have a sign problem there should be a negative sign here okay and this what is the truncation error now minus alpha into 1 plus alpha squared h squared by 3 factorial and I have to divide by alpha times 1 plus alpha so it gives you an 1 plus alpha f triple prime at i it has to be a plus No, it is right. There is a negative sign here. There is a negative sign here. Where did I miss? There is a negative sign here. There is a negative sign here. And there is one more negative sign. It will turn out right. See, I have another way. I have another way by which I checked. If you notice, I glanced at the other board. What was the truncation error for the forward difference? That was positive. So this will be negative. Right? There are some simple sanity checks that you can do. Fine. Okay. So, and you can see if you set alpha equals alpha equals one, whether it works out. So clearly, if they are unequal, clearly if they are unequal, it's going to become very messy. Yes. No, no, you have it is the same thing you have you have, you have 3 points they are unequal they are unequal distances but I can still eliminate I can still eliminate the second derivative term and get an expression for the first derivative leaving a truncation error which has only the third derivative term. You want to calculate the derivative at the next point and that could be it could be you know uh, some beta h or something of that so that could be something else altogether you would still have you would still have un, unequal intervals you could still have unequal intervals no no it need not always be alpha it need not be alpha always be alpha there is a there is a process called geometric stretching where it is always alpha right it is a constant that is a nice situation but if it is not uh, it need not always be the same okay so the point next to it could be some ratio is that fine right it need not be h by alpha something of that sort it need not be that way okay right so the the idea is that the adjacent intervals are not of equal size fine so and as you can see from the how from the fact that the expression is so messy it's possible for us to calculate it but clearly from a from a thank you clearly from a, a classroom point of view right it doesn't it doesn't add anything i just want you to have an awareness i will do one more 
I will do one more in this class with unequal intervals as I said, but it does not add anything to my class as such, right. So if you take uneven intervals which you very often will be forced for other reasons, right, to take uneven intervals, when you are forced to take uneven intervals, you will get messy expressions and this error seems to be slightly large. I mean if alpha is depending on the value of alpha, this the magnitude of this error term is going to change, okay. So you may, you should have a reason. So you will be changing these h values because you have maybe possibly some knowledge on how the function is varying, right and then that is the reason why you are trying to compensate. If you know that the triple prime is large, then you may be changing your alpha in order to compensate for that error, it is possible, okay. There are many reasons. You will see that when you, when you run into it at a later date in a more advanced course, you will see why, why you would change, take unequal intervals. In this class as I said, I will do it one more time, but the reason why I will not persist, I will always assume equal intervals is because it just makes life easier and the derivations are always possible. Whatever I do with equal intervals, you can repeat as I have indicated with unequal intervals. Is that fine? Okay. So let us look at uh, the second derivative, right. So far we have looked at the first derivative. You have a first order forward difference uh, representation, backward difference representation, second order forward difference, backward difference, right. You have one third order representation that I did in the last class. So you can work out other higher order, I would suggest, I would strongly recommend that you work out other higher order representations for the first derivative, okay, for the first derivative. Now let us look at the second derivative again, I will repeat the second derivative, I will quickly repeat the second derivative, right, that we did last time. So it is second order, second derivative, just because I am going to do it, I am going to do it twice, one which we did last class and then I am going to repeat it again with unequal intervals. So like I did, I have xi, xi plus 1, xi minus, uh, xi plus, oh, 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 I am sorry, xi minus 1, xi plus 1, i minus 1, i, i plus 1. Of course, you can also see whether you can get one-sided derivatives right for the second derivative one sided representations I leave that to you. So what we have is simple expansion again using Taylor series about the point i f i plus h times f prime at i and again h equals x i plus 1 minus x i equals x i minus x i minus 1 okay in this case they are equal plus h squared by 2 factorial second derivative of y plus h cube by 3 factorial third derivative of i plus h to the fourth by 4 factorial and so on. Please remember, so we are using Taylor series to expand about the point i, xi, okay. You could as well use Taylor series to expand about any other point. We choose to expand about the point i because we want the representation at the point i, right. We want the representation of the derivative at point i, therefore we choose i. If you want the representation elsewhere, then you have to expand about that point. Is that fine? Is that okay? So f, f at i minus 1 is f at i minus h times f prime at i plus h squared by 2 factorial f double prime at i minus h cube by 3 factorial. So this is sort of a dreary process but unfortunately you have to get it right, okay, otherwise it does not work, the detail is very important. So if I just add the 2, this cancels, that cancels. So it gives me for my first derivative an expression we derived in the last class. The second, I am sorry, the second derivative, an expression we derived in the last class that is f double prime at i is fi plus 1 minus 2 fi plus fi minus 1 divided by h squared. Minus h squared by, there are two of them. Okay, this is a truncation error. We have seen this. 
we have seen this. So the question is what happens if we take unequal intervals okay so we will look at that and then I will sort of we will close the subject of what happens with unequal intervals. So what happens if you take unequal intervals for the representation of the second derivative we have seen what happens for the first derivative first derivative we still got a second order representation it is just that the coefficient of that truncation term change we will see what happens here. So instead of instead of uh, h right instead of h so okay we will we'll, we'll just write it again. So we have uh, i minus 1 i i plus 1 this is h this is alpha h okay just to keep it clean we will just redo it quickly. So f i plus 1 is f i plus h times the first derivative plus h squared pi by 2 second derivative which is what we want plus h cube by 3 factorial the third derivative plus h to the fourth by 4 factorial fourth derivative and so on okay. Normally if you did not know how many I would you would take a lot of terms depending on what is it how, how what order you are going to take right you cannot stop at fourth derivative if you want a much higher order. So I stop at fourth derivative because I know I am going to get something that is of the order of second order. F i minus 1 is F i plus minus alpha h f prime at i plus alpha squared h by 2 f double prime at i minus alpha cubed h by 3 factorial f triple prime at i plus alpha to the fourth this is not as bad as the first derivative term right h to the fourth 4 factorial 4 derivative i and so on is that fine h squared h cubed I'm being a little careless today. So if I multiply by the see now I am a little desperate I want to get rid of that I have to get rid of that first derivative that is my need I want the second derivative. So I multiply the first equation by alpha to get rid of that okay. So I get alpha f i plus 1 and to that I add the second equation f i minus 1 equals 1 plus alpha times f i. I get an alpha f i plus a 1 f i the second term cancels what happens here plus alpha 1 plus alpha into 1 plus alpha h squared by 2 f double prime at i that is the term that I want plus alpha into and what happens to the last one Now this looks very different this looks very different. So if I do if I if I try to evaluate maybe write it here pardon me no no I think you can verify you can check you can check it out it is okay I get it out of the way we will stick with this we will stick with this material what we are doing right now. So f double prime at i is alpha f i plus 1 minus 1 plus alpha f i 
plus f i minus 1 divided by alpha into 1 plus alpha h squared to 2 right so if alpha equals 1 that 2 and this 1 plus alpha will cancel that is the idea okay and alpha equals 1 this will be 1 that is 2 that is 1 it goes back to the standard expression. What about the truncation error? So you have a you have a third derivative term right so you have a minus this is a truncation error so I have divided by alpha 1 plus alpha so it gives me a 1 minus alpha h by 3 at i and this gives me a minus 1 minus alpha plus alpha squared a little algebraic fourth derivative at i and there is an h squared here and this is the difference. So for the second derivative term if you take unequal grids the convergence rate drops the representation of the derivative suddenly became the truncation error became first order the convergence is linear it is not quadratic it goes to 0 as h not as h squared this is very important to remember and it introduces a, a third derivative term this will have significance later on later in the semester I will remind you about this okay later in the semester I will remind you about this it adds so if you have unequal grids if you have unequal grids it introduces a third derivative term is that fine okay and it introduces a convergence which is first order and not something that is second order of course if alpha equals 1 this goes away right and we, we retrieve what we had for equal intervals is that fine okay. So as I said it is always possible for us with unequal intervals to calculate derivatives it is always possible so when you encounter it you know how to do it but we are not going to do it anymore because it is just a mess and it does not add anything else okay but I do want you to remember this is very important that if you go for unequal intervals you cannot be sure that the order that you get is the same order you have to recalculate it you have to rework it okay right now let us apply this now that we have all these all these derivatives that we can represent and functions that we can represent let us apply these let us apply what we have got right to uh, differential equations some differential equations we will choose a simple one right now we will use we will look at Laplace's equation we will look at Laplace's equation is that fine okay. So we will look at Laplace's equation in two dimensions I am going to st uh, stick to two dimensions here. So this symbol is called nabla right we are used to calling it del but it is called nabla. So this would be nabla squared phi equals 0 okay fine and we could choose we could choose to solve this problem in a very simple region we can choose a region that is in the first quadrant maybe a unit square and in this unit square you have this equation that is valid and on the boundary possibly we provide boundary conditions. So you know of many ways by which you can solve these, this equation possibly in PD you have studied variables separable and so on right there, there are many ways by which you can solve it here we look at see whether we can represent the derivatives on a mesh and whether we can use that to infer the solution okay so to obtain that solution. So we know that in two dimensions this would be dou squared phi dou x squared plus dou squared phi dou y squared equals 0. I will use an alternative notation I may switch between them depending on convenience. So if there is no confusion 
you may occasionally see me write that because it is much more compact notation okay both of them represent Laplace's equation in two dimensions and this is an expansion of that nabla squared. So what is the typical mesh point that I am going to take just like we said i i plus 1 i minus 1 how are we going to do it in two dimensions in two dimensions in Cartesian coordinates I am going to take equal intervals right. So this would have now two indices one for going traversing along in the x direction and one for traversing along in the y direction. So that would be i plus 1 j that would be i minus 1 j that would be i j minus 1 and that would be i j plus 1 okay. I will take all of these intervals for the sake of convenience to be h. I think you can figure out what will happen if you change the values you could there are so many different things that could happen it could be h here and it could be some different value in the y direction each one of them can be different there are so many possibilities you can work it out. So what is the first derivative what is the first term at the point ij using the expression that we have just derived it is phi i plus 1 j minus 2 phi i j plus phi i minus 1 j divided by h squared okay. So at the nodal points if I have the function phi given by i plus 1 j i j i minus 1 j phi at the appropriate points I can estimate the derivative okay and we have a truncation error associated with it I say equals at this point but we know already that I say equals but we know it is an approximation it is a representation right but I will I will I will write equals i j in a similar fashion is phi i j plus 1 minus 2 phi i j plus phi i j minus 1 divided by h squared clearly if they were delta x and delta y it would be delta x squared and delta y squared okay that is not a big deal fine. So now to represent Laplace equation at that point so now I am talking about represent so far we are talking about derivatives now I am going to actually represent the equation I will add these two okay I will add the two and I can actually represent Laplace's equation x x plus phi y y at the point i j gives me phi i j phi i plus 1 j minus 2 phi i j plus phi i minus 1 j by h squared plus phi i j plus 1 not a big deal minus 2 phi i j plus phi i j minus 1 h squared and this is supposed to be 0 this at that point is supposed to be 0 at that point okay. So now I will say this represents Laplace's equation at that point at the point ij and it is actually possible for us it is actually possible for us to solve for phi at ij after all that is really what we want we want the phi at ij in fact turns out so if you multiply through by h squared the right hand side is 0 so the h squared will go away okay this turns out to be phi i plus 1 j plus phi i minus 1 j plus phi i j plus 1 plus phi i j minus 1 by 4 right by 4 I write you could write by 4 just to encourage you to multiply instead of divide I will write times 0.25. So now I change to a programming notation multiplied by 0.25 okay is that fine but the by 4 is important it is the average of this of the neighbors that is the key. So solution to this equation is the average of solution to this equation at this point 
the value at this point is the average of the values at the neighboring point okay is that fine okay so now we have some mechanism by which we can take represent Laplace's equation at a given point we will see what we can do with this yeah you have a question how does well in this case it does not matter because we are taking derivatives only with x and y but you can actually write Taylor series in two dimensions. There is a there is a Taylor series expansion for two dimensions. So if you say you, you may have seen it in multivariate calculus, you can actually write it. You can actually expand about the point f of x y, right? And then it will turn out to be I'm just I'm just writing this f x f y where f x is derivative with respect to x, f y is derivative with respect, and you can go on. So you will get an you will get a h squared f x x g squared f y y 2 h g f x y you understand and, and you can add you can keep on adding terms right. So there is a from your multivariate calculus if you go back you will look you will see that you will actually pick up okay. So and you would need that you would need that if these grids were not orthogonal to each other that is if you had grids that were not in not only unequal but they are not along the coordinate lines they are not along the coordinate lines so not only are they they could be equal or unequal but they are not along coordinate lines right and then you can run into this problem that uh, you would have to do it in you would have to do it this way but uh, trust me there are there are better ways by which one can do this right. So uh, we will see uh, if we, we will see may I do not know whether you need to you need to look up a little tensor calculus I usually do something on tensor calculus we will see whether we get there or not at least I will give you a motivation for why you should learn tensor calculus as we go along okay let us get back here what do we have. So this is a problem that we want to solve we will make up a problem and we will see how we would go about solving it using what we have just derived. So what we do is again to keep life easy we will break this up we will break up our problem domain using a mesh and you will notice that uh, in this case of course there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 at the 3 interior points right. So this would be so that would be some point ij that I was talking about okay and how would the problem be normally prescribed how would you normally prescribe the problem. So just say this is a unit square so this is a point 0, 0 which is the origin this is a point 1 comma 1 right so unit square located at the origin unit square located at the origin and what we want to do is we want to see whether we can solve Laplace's equation. So given some boundary condition we will figure out how to get those boundary conditions given some boundary conditions if I prescribe some boundary conditions which means that the values at these points are known. So if I prescribe some boundary conditions values at these points are known and if we are able to find the values at the interior points right then we have phi j's at the interior points and using possibly hat functions or something of that sort we may be able to interpolate right actually we would use hat functions in 2D but I have not defined hat functions in 2D but you can use hat functions and actually use linear interpolants to find a value anywhere in between okay. Is that fine? So what you can do now is at any given point ij you just repeat this so phi ij is phi i plus 1j phi i minus 1j phi i j plus 1 phi i j minus 1 I am going to say divided by 4 here but you know you have to multiply by 0.25 you just repeat this process for every interior every interior node the conditions on the boundary are given okay. So when you are when you are trying to figure out what is the value at that node this is known that is known right let us number these. So let us say this point is 0 0 
this is uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, okay. So this is 0, 01 and this would be 11, get rid of that. 1 and so on and this point is of interest this is 0 2 this is 1 2. So if you are if you want to find the value at 1 1 you need the values at 1 2 2 1 0 1 1 0 from the boundary conditions you have the values at 1 0 and 0 1 okay we do not have the values at 1 2 and 2 1 so we not only do not have the value at 1 1 we do not have the values anywhere in between. So in order to get this working the process that we will start doing is we will make an assumption about the interior values just make an assumption let us start with a guess right a good guess would be 0 we have nothing to go with right now right there are many there are many possible guesses right now I have not even told you what the boundary conditions are so good guess is 0. So let us just assume that all the interior values are 0 and you are given boundary conditions okay so you can find phi i j at any given point by taking the values of the neighboring point then you can go to the adjacent point take the values of the neighboring point you understand and you can do this for all the interior points you do not touch the boundary points because the boundary points are known already. So if you keep repeating this process for all the interior points as time progresses we hope that the phi i j is evolved that you are generating a sequence of phi i j's so if this is you are generating a sequence of phi i j's right n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4 that you generate a sequence of phi i j's and you hope that sequence converges right now we hope that sequence converges and if that sequence converges you will have a set of phi values at every grid point okay is that fine okay. So I, I, I it is better if you just try it out and work a problem and I think then it will work out. If you go through that sequence and it has converged how do you know the answer that you have got is the right answer well you have points at these values you have grid points. So when you say something is a solution to a differential equation what do you do you substitute into the differential equation and verify whether it is true or not right. So you could substitute into the original differential equation phi x x plus phi y y equals 0 but in this case you just have points at various nodes okay right and if you substitute in the difference equation you can find out what is it that the difference equation gives you okay but the differential equation itself requires that you take derivatives and you have only discrete nodes okay is that fine right. So I think what you do is you can uh, you can try this out just give some arbitrary boundary conditions we will work out maybe a more specific problem in the next class just try to give it some arbitrary boundary conditions and see what it works what happens right yeah. Sir, we have 9 unknown grid points. Right in this what I have drawn you have 9 unknowns right. So, we have 9 conditions right. So we can solve the linear set of equations. Uh, yeah there are issues so that is that we, we will get to that right so we will see what it is that we are doing that is actually what we are doing right we will actually figure out what is it that we are exactly what exactly are we doing okay right so we will get back to this on Monday thank you.